So on the uh, last night of Jesus' life, he told his disciples mm -hmm. that, um, that everyone would know that they were his disciples by their love for each other. And so on the one hand, he gives them uh, a, clear, um, a clear moral guideline that they mm -hmm. should live by. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's supposed to distinguish them from everyone else. So does God have a different uh, set of standards uh, for judging uh, his own people than he does for judging uh, all the people of the nations uh, that may or may not be uh, mm. his disciples? Hmm. Right, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think in, in one sense, uh, yes, there is a different standard. I think when, you know, when he talks about um, loving, uh, loving your enemy, Mm -hmm. um, praying for those who persecute you. Mm -hmm. He is calling um, his followers to a sacrificial kind of love. Mm. Um, yeah, it's one that they couldn't have done prior to what Jesus did as well, uh, I think. Right, so if, if there right. is a different standard, it's, it's right in line of, of something that being a follower of Jesus uniquely equips mm. you to do in a way you can never have done before. So there's if there's a right. different standard there, it's also because there's a different power. That's right, yeah. To fulfill yeah. it. Yeah. At least on the individual level. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. But it, at the at the same time, there's a um, I think in, in Romans in particular, I think of the, when Paul talks about the law written on the heart that the Gentiles mm -hmm. who haven't been given the law that uh, God gave to the Jews, they still have an understanding of the requirements of um, who it is that God's created them to be as human persons. So there's a there's there's something that's shared about human nature. Mm -hmm. Um, there and um, when he gets over to uh, Paul in Romans 13 when he's talking about the establishment of uh, political authority he says God all authority is given by God to um, to reward good and to punish evil and that assumes that there's some knowledge uh, knowledge of what good and evil is so hearkening back to this idea that there's a law written on the hearts that everyone has access to, and thus they can be held accountable uh, to that standard. Yeah, and we see that also in Genesis to some degree, mm. right? You don't necessarily have the Mosaic law, but in, in what is it, Genesis 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, when you have the account of the flood, part of the account of wickedness is this, this kind of universal wickedness. Um, that is polluting the land, that is kind of ruining mm. the good world of God. So and you see that language of pollution also applied to, to what nations do when they've embraced certain forms of wickedness, whether that's idolatrous worship, child sacrifice, violence and bloodshed, and uh, no regard for the oppressed or the poor, that, that that also is often said to pollute the land in similar ways. So whether it's Israel or whether it's Babylon, Part human wickedness has an impact on the world that, that is the same no matter who you are. And so is that how you, the, the idea of an impact on the world, is that the way, way the standard that God uses for judging the nations, what uh, oh. impact their actions have on others? Well, I, I guess you get, you get a, it's not the only, if it is, it's not the only one, okay. I think, is, the fir is my first stab at that, I think, is, is because and even Babylon's a great example here, right? You get um, two, two prophets in, in, in the biblical text who are treating, ba well, many prophets who are treating them quite directly, um, but two that come to mind for me are Jonah and Nahum. Uh, which is t that these two prophetic utterances that are there, at least in the, the context of the book, they're, set, they're in settings that are about 100 years apart. Mm -hmm. uh, we all know the story of Jonah. The punchline of the story of Jonah is, Jonah's cross because what the, this this what he sees as an evil nation and if you you know go mm. go look into history you'll see that you know, that was a fair fair call on mm -hmm. Jonah's part this evil nation is is sort of being given a chance to repent instead of getting what they so richly deserve mm -hmm. he wants them to get what they deserve but God says at the end like he points out to the city and says shouldn't shouldn't I care also for this city mm -hmm. Jonah's answer seems to be no you shouldn't they're evil mm -hmm. um, but God's answer is I do. But you zoom forward to a setting that's 100 years later in the book of Nahum. There the prophetic utterance is saying, it's time to make a complete end. 
Mm-hmm. Here, mm-hmm. it's time. With, not with Babylon, with Nineveh. I mis- misspoke earlier. With or Nineveh, Assyria, it's time with in the, Assyria, it's the Assyrian Capital, Empire. Yeah, yeah. So I was thinking Babylon yeah. earlier. It's time to make what he says over and over again: this complete end. Like th- this stage of history for this nation is done. Their wickedness has, has sort of been piled up, and now it's the time for a complete end. So again, you get you get not a picture of like, well, this one sin always deserves this, or mm. or this action is going to get this all the time. You get a, a richer picture, in fact, of God working through history. Um, to give nations a chance to repent, but also to acknowledge the fact that left to ourselves, hmm. we are we rebel against God, we do violence against each other, um, and we corrupt a just order. And, it's, and sooner or later, hmm. there has to be an end to that. That's interesting because you spelled out three different things. So there's rebellion against God, there's uh, the, uh, the inner relationship be- between the people, and yeah. then the just order of of creation. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, do you think among those three, like, is the uh, are are the nations uh, held accountable equally for all? I mean, for in mm. particular, mm. that mm. the idea of rebelling against God. Mm. If they don't right. know God, right. then how can they be held uh, accountable for that? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing that the text that I think of um, uh, in relation to this question is uh, Augustine's City of God mm. from. Uh, uh, early early Christian history when the Roman Empire is attacking the church as leading to the dissolution of the political order. And Augustine's primary uh, concern there is uh, you know in, in evaluating uh, what makes for a just political order mm-hmm. is to say it's only within the city of God and it's mm. only among the people of God that real virtue can develop mm. and thus that you can have a community oriented to and organized by real justice that's directed toward the final end for which mankind was created. Um, And if it's the case that only in that community real justice can be realized, Mm -hmm. then the standard according to which you judge um, the city of man, the, the justice that's in the secular temporal order is to, in large part defined by to what degree does it provide the, um, the context of mm. peace and tranquility and social order that allows the real justice of the city of God mm. among the people of God to thrive. Yeah. That happens a lot in families that are, or, that are uh, enlivened by uh, the spirit of God and then also in, in the church. Um, so for Augustine, that's the, I think that's the primary standard of, of thinking about, is this a just uh, political order? Yeah, because he does want to preserve that, like, it really is better to live in a country where there's, like, a decent criminal justice system, where, where its execution is not arbitrary, where the roads mm-hmm. work really well, and where there's public sanitation that does a good, right. like, that all those things that, that foster relatively peaceful human relationships, that it really is better to live in a place like that if you can. I think he wants to acknowledge that. But he also wants to call that a, a kind of a false peace. A peace that's no peace at all. It, it's just a way of dealing with and living with mm. wickedness, rebellion, and all those things. So mm. he's actually, when he, when he begins to talk about justice, it's even though that's, those things are good, it's, it's nice when you know Carthage or Rome or Milan can provide those, we're all a little bit happier. But it's not the real thing. Mm-hmm. It's not real justice. And let's, mm-hmm. not, let's not pretend that an earthly institution right. can mm-hmm. really deliver they always mm-hmm. end up failing. But I think from to, to bring those together, like it seems like we've hit on like a new one that we a new idea of how God judges the nation mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. from what you from what Augustine says, and that is, do the nations provide a um, safe place for r- true justice, mm-hmm. the justice that only comes within uh, the community of the people of God uh, to flourish? Mm-hmm. Um, and um, that's when I, may, when I think of. The final judgment when uh, God, when uh, the judge says, you know, how have you treated the least of these my brothers? Mm, It's that justice that is for uh, the brotherhood of Jesus Mm. uh, that that the nations allow to flourish. The Tory Honors Institute at Biola University. Biblically centered, great books, liberal education. More at biola.edu slash Tory.